Hi guys, Louis here and welcome to another video and shout out to everyone who's already subscribed and if you're watching this and you haven't already subscribed then why not mate? This is like the best design channel going. So today's tutorial is going to be about taking your flat logo designs and uh, making them 3D and making them spin around in After Effects which um, it looks pretty cool. You can use this in loads of different ways. You can use this as a little Instagram sticker or as a loading icon on a website. Um, but it really brings the logos to life and it's simple and effective. So for this tutorial, we are gonna be using um, like a flat vector graphic. So something like an EPS PDF or something that you created in Illustrator. This isn't gonna really show you how to do it from, from a PNG, but there are ways to do it. If you do need to do it, um, you can search that and there are ways so you can actually do it that way. But uh, for this one, I'm going off the basis that you have your logo as a flat uh, EPS vector file or Illustrator file, whatever. I'll also be showing you at the end of the video how you can actually export these as transparent videos, uh, so without a background, and you can convert it to a GIF and actually upload it onto your Instagram stories. And this is without actually having a uh, like Giphy account or anything like that, how you can actually just send it to your phone and upload it as an overlay uh, on your Instagram stories, which is pretty cool. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how to do that as well. But yeah, let's get into creating it. Okay, so we're in Illustrator and um, this is the logo that I've created for this spinning effect. I have two different layers and you can have as many layers as you want for as many different parts that you want moving in different directions. So I want this central CSC logo to be spinning one way and then I want the texture on the outside to also be rotating, um, but at a different in a different direction. So I've got those two on two different layers because they're gonna be acting as their own separate part basically. So. Um, split your design up into different layers if you want them moving differently. If not, one layer is fine if you just want one simple rotating um, logo. So once that you have your logo and you're happy um, with the way it looks and you want to start adding this effect, um, just save it and open your After Effects. So now that After Effects is open, we're just gonna create a new composition. Oh, close that. Uh, create a new composition. I'm just gonna create a 1920 by 1080. 10 seconds is fine. Background color, I'm just gonna change to white for now because my logo is black, so you won't be able to see it on black on black. So I'm just gonna create white background and then I'll make it black uh, once I've dragged my stuff in. So once you've got your composition here, just drag your Illustrator file or your PDF or EPS um, just straight into, into your composition. If you have got an Illustrator file and you're dragging it in, it will come up with this little box here, um, which you want to import it as a composition. So this will have a pre-comp uh, with your layers within it. Uh, so just press OK for that. So as you can see, it's here, and if you double click on it, it's got the two layers within it. You can't actually see it when you double click it because the um, background is black and it's black on black, which isn't helpful, but um, we can just turn it off until we change the color. So now that you've got your logo uh, and your two separate layers in your After Effects file, as you can see, it, turn them off. They're on two separate layers. We're going to focus on one section at a time. So I'm going to focus on this main central section. If we go down to our layer and right click, we can go to the create and create shapes from a vector. Now what this has done is basically what he says on the tin. It's just created a shape from your vector file. So if you turn that off, as you can see, this is on its own as a shape file. So now that it's a shape file, we can um, press this little 3D box here. So this little cube is a 3d box click on that and then when we go to the drop down menu here we've now got geometry options material options and in the transform tools we'll have a um we'll have more axis that we can ro rotate our um rotate our shape on so go down to geometry and uh, you'll see you've got the extrusion depth here and this is how thick the uh or how deep it's going to extrude basically so the easiest way to see this is uh, go to the Y rotation and change it to 90 degrees. And this will make your object go sideways. Um, obviously at the moment it hasn't got any depth to it, so it's just a line. Uh, but when we start extruding it, you can see how the shape is getting larger. And then if you change the angle, you can see how it's now already 3D. So I'm just gonna undo that and i'm gonna make this depth probably about i think 85 will do um as you can see at the moment though the uh anchor point is on the front uh here which means when it spins it will spin off center so what we want to do is make sure that our anchor point is in the center of our shape so to do this we can zoom into our composition click on our anchor points tool which is this one here 
and click on our shape. And when you have the little highlight here, the Z axis, this should allow us to move that anchor point forward and backwards, like so. We can go back and tidy that up later, but for the moment, that will do. So now we can zoom out and we can change our rotation back to zero. So now that we know that this one is actually extruded, what we can do is go down to the Y rotation and add a keyframe and then go to just somewhere else on the timeline, add another keyframe. And if we go to these settings here and the left one is how many times it rotates within those two points. So you could do one, two, however many rotations you want will be obviously go a lot quicker or how many degrees. So we can just do one time. And then if we pan up and down, you can see that it's already animating in 3D. This second keyframe, I'm actually gonna drag the whole way to the end of the composition so that it um, sits half off the edge here. And then my first one, I'm gonna make sure is just at the start. So when we play this through, when it gets to the end of the composition and it goes back to the start, it will loop seamlessly. So it will just keep spinning forever, basically. If you export it as a GIF, it will just keep seamlessly rotating and it looks like it just keeps going and going and going. Um, you don't want it to stop um, just before or look janky or anything like that. Right, so we've got our logo and we have our extrude going on. Um, so the way to actually see this in 3D, um, so it doesn't look so flat and so it has some shadows um, and light bouncing off it sort of thing, is to create a light. So if we right click on the panel here and go new light it will bring up this light settings box here um, we want to create a spotlight and these settings we can change um, after we've actually created it we can see how it works and then if it you know needs to be changed we can create that um, after so press ok and I'm going to actually unhide this transparent back, uh, background so it's on black again and if we go to our shape down here and click on here we now have the because it's already a shape we have the option up here to change the color so I'm gonna just change mine to maybe a silver or gray, white, whatever. Press okay, so now we can actually see it on that black. Now that we've got the light there as well, we're gonna start seeing those gradients coming through. So if you pan across on your timeline, you can see the actual gradient coming off the side of the shape, like so. So now we're actually starting to see it in 3D um, with that light coming in as well. So I'm actually gonna change this back again so it's a little bit darker, like a dark gray like so and I think the light's a little bit too intense on the middle so I can go on my spotlight and I'm going to change the intensity here I'm going to drop it down I reckon to let's say 150 and press ok uh, that's actually probably a little bit too dark let's go back change that 220 press ok there we go I'm liking it like that as you can see, as it spins around, it fades up to black on the sides, pretty cool. So I'm gonna keep mine like that. So I'm just gonna change this to quarter so it loads quicker. So as you can see now, if you press play or space bar, it will um, spin around and you can see it's 3D. And because you've got the light on it now and the light's sort of reflecting off and you've got the shadows and highlights, it, it looks a lot more 3D than the flat shape we had when we first started this. So, so now we're ready to animate our second layer, which is the text going around the outside. So I'm gonna have this rotating round whilst the, cent uh, the center CSC logo is, is kind of spinning. So um, we can turn this little eye on here to see this. We're not gonna be able to see it because it's black. So I'm gonna turn off the background uh, and we can see it here. And um, we can right click, go down to create and create shapes from vector again. Now, if, if at this point you get like a an error message, or you might get it in your logo um, saying it's not supported or something like that. When you're in Illustrator or if you've got a PDF file or whatever, you're gonna need to make sure that all of your text is actually outlined. Um, so it is imported as like a, just a graphic rather than imported as text, because uh, it will come up with a weird error message. So if you're in Illustrator and you've got some, you know, some text going on, make sure it's outlined before dragging it in, or go back into your Illustrator file, outline it and save it and then go back into After Effects and it will just update it for you. Um, so yeah, so now that we've created our um, outlines from that layer as well, I'm gonna also change that one to white so we can see it. And then I'm gonna turn the background back on again. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this next text layer. I'm gonna make sure that the little 3D shape here is turned on, go to the drop down, go to the geometry, and I'm gonna extrude it by 
10. This will add a little bit of depth, but um, I'm not actually rotating it on a Y axis, so you won't actually see the extrude, but you will be able to see the shadows within the shape cast off like the depth. So for this top layer, I'm gonna to go to transform. It's gonna be the Z rotation. So I do a little keyframe by pressing the stopwatch. I can test that by looking there. Yep, I know it's spinning around the right way. And I'm gonna just drag to the middle, create another one. And I'm gonna to go to one on that as well. Or actually I'm gonna change that one to two. I want that to go faster than the one in the middle. And then I can drag my keyframe to the end of the composition uh, and make sure it's kind of hanging off the end like so, so I know it's gonna continuously loop as well. So now if we go back to the start and press play. You can see that the outside one is spinning round whilst the middle one is spinning round and they're both on the different axis. Cool, so the top layer is looking a little bit flat compared to the rest. So I'm gonna make sure that my, first of all, I'm gonna make sure that my um, spot layer is at the top, my spotlight. And then I'm gonna go and see how I can actually play with the light fall off on this. So I'm gonna drag it in like so, maybe make it a little bit further out. This is the Z axis to make it go forward and backwards towards the, the camera. Um, and click off it. So there, there you can see that actually the outside has now also got a little bit of gradient fall off going on, some shadows and some light, uh, which is pretty nice. Like so, cool. So what we can do now is also go to our layer. So I'm gonna to go to this central layer here and go to the drop down and we can start playing around with some of the material options so this is going to be how um how light basically reacts with that layer so i kind of want the reflection intensity to be quite high maybe not too high maybe like 52 let's see what that looks like yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see even now as it's starting to go round, you can see the light bouncing off it a lot more. It's starting to reflect like as if it's made out of metal. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing for my top one as well. Change that to 52. So that's looking pretty cool there. Feel free to play around with all of these um, settings down here because it's gonna have different, um, basically different light reactions to whatever you change in this this little section here so um, play around with that and see what works for your design and how it interacts with the rest of your shape like the rest of the the assets going on around it um, you might have loads of assets all doing different things and the shadows are a bit too much you can turn them down or you might want the shadows to interact with the rest of um, your graphics so you want to turn them up um, but yeah just play around with those they're, they're, they're quite um, I guess they're, they're tailored to whatever your graphic is. So um, feel free to have a little play around with those. But um, the next thing that's also quite interesting um, is we can also now create environments. So what I can do is drop in a texture and uh, set it as an environment layer. And this means that depending on how reflective this shape is, this, um, this graphic, um, it will actually start to reflect some of that environment. So say you put in a, I don't know, water texture or a holographic texture. As this is spinning, it will start to reflect some of the colors or some of the shapes that are actually on that texture, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to head over to Unsplash, which is probably one of the best places to get free, like ro royalty free images, I think. Um, and I'm going to search uh, holographic texture and there's loads on here um they're all pretty nice i want i'm gonna go for this one by sean sinclair big up thanks mate this is pretty nice texture gonna down download that so yep say thanks thanks to sean thanks sean mate legend um so now that we're in our after effects i'm just gonna drop that texture in on top and make sure the scale of it goes down so it fits just over the shape like so. And then what we can do is click on this, right click and go environment layer. So if we go to the drop down settings of our logo, 
we can now make sure that this reflection intensity is a lot higher, so 100, so you can see it. And when we start to rotate our shape, we can see those colors actually reflecting off, off the shape, uh, which is pretty cool. So we can start reflecting some holographic shapes if you want to. Um, obviously do the same for your top layer as well, make sure that it's reflection uh, intensity is on 100 um, and move it up and down depending on how much you actually want to be reflected. So it's a really cool way to sort of mimic some uh, additional textures on there. As you can see, it's also reflecting the, um, the text going around the outside. Um, and it really does bring uh, an extra element into this, but um, I don't want that for mine at the moment. So I'm just gonna go back and turn that layer off. Um, and then I'm gonna make sure that my reflection intensity is back to 52, how it was before. Like so. I'm happy for mine to be like this. I just kind of want mine um, monochrome uh, at the moment. Um, but obviously, if you did want to change any of the colors, you can simply click on your layer outlines and go to the fill and change the color. You can also, um, on your spotlight, you can change the color of your spotlight, which will have an effect of your overall design, like so. So now that we've got our logo, it's all spinning and we are happy with the way it looks, um, we can export it. So because it's just a composition background um, that's black, it's actually transparent. Um, it means we can export it straight as it is. So to export something transparent, um, you need to export it and render it straight from After Effects rather than um, Media Encoder. So you can go from File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. If you go down to Lossless, and on the channels here, if you go RGB and Alpha, what this will do is export this design with an alpha channel. So what that means is when you export it, it will still export transparent. It's a great way to sort of create these assets and you can drag them over the top of an image in another software like Premiere, or you can drag it over the top of a video, or you can export it and turn it into a GIF, uh, which I'm gonna show you how to do now, um, and also show you how to get it onto Instagram, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna choose where we're gonna export it to, and we can press render. So while that's rendering out, feel free to head over to my YouTube channel and hit subscribe, you know, all counts in it, all helps. Um, yeah, so now that it's exported and um, it's here as a .mov file, what you can actually do is just click on it and drag it straight into Photoshop. So just drag it straight onto the icon and wait for that to load. It will, you know, have a little, uh, little loading screen come up, um, but it's actually gonna import it straight into Photoshop as a video file. And now what we're gonna do, I'm actually just gonna crop this down to a square. So just a one by one square so that there's less room around my export. So what we're gonna wanna do now is export this for web and export this as a GIF. There is a shortcut to do this, which is Command, Option, Shift and S, which will bring up this Save for Web window. Or what you can do is just go to File, Export, and then go for Save for, uh, Save for Web here. And it'll bring the same window up. Um, so the preset at the top right here, we're going to want to change that to GIF, uh, 1 to 8, no dipper. And over where it says matte here, make sure none is ticked. Save this. So as you can see now in our export folder, we have the clean logo that's spinning around. You can see the reflections. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this uh, to my phone, but I'm just going to airdrop it over. And then I'm gonna show you how you can use this as a sticker on your Instagram stories. This is weird as to me. So what you can do is you can take a photo of yourself or add a photo in. There we go, lovely mate, look at that, golden. Add a little filter on, like so. And then if basically, if you go to your camera roll and press this little arrow at the bottom, it'll bring up this and you can press copy. And then if you go back to your Instagram, it will pop up as a sticker. So you can then add that sticker straight onto your Instagram like so. Make it bigger, make it smaller. Um, and yeah, really bring those uh, them selfies to life. So that's it for today's video. Um, I hope it's been helpful. I hope um, it's something new and uh, I hope you use it. It's, it's quite, quite a simple um, little thing to do and it really does bring your logos to life. Um, and again, yeah, if you're doing any sort of event work or uh, working for a client where they've actually, um, you're gonna be showcasing something on Instagram, um, it's a really good way as well to sort of uh, personalize um, those Instagram stories or you know that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, let me know what you thought down below. Um, if you wanna see more of these sort of tutorials, 
Um, I have got a series coming up this week as well, the start of a new series, so make sure you are uh, subscribed to see that. Thank you for watching, take care, keep your two meters away from everyone, and I'll see you again soon. So yeah, see you later, bye.